Uh, hello, Bible students. Hello, this is, uh, I think, lecture 16. And we left off last time in the middle of Romans chapter 12. And we had made the pivot in Paul from talking about doctrine to talking about how we should live. So moving from teaching to ethics. The doctrine in the sense of this is what Christianity believes. This is what you ought to believe if you're a Christian. Instead of from believing to acting. How should we act? How do we live our lives if we believe this to be true, right? And uh, so that's what you get uh, starting in, verse, in chapter 12. And we're in the middle of chapter 12 at verse 9. So get your Bibles out. Turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 9. And read along with me. And he's going to have here the key uh, is, is love and what springs from it, the things we should love and the things we should hate. <laughs> so if we're living a good Christian life, we should love certain things and hate other kinds of things, not people, but conduct and wrong things that go in the world. Paul didn't tell us to hate people. All right, Jesus didn't teach us to hate anybody, but some kinds of things are just not right and we should turn away from them strongly. And uh, so that's what's, uh, that's what's going on here. At verse 9, sorry, verse 9, my apologies, I probably need new glasses. Uh, chapter 12, verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Love, hate. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. So he's going to have you try to discern what's good and what's evil. Love and cling to the good. Hate and shun the bad. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Incidentally, the Greek word for brotherly love is Philadelphia. So our big city in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, means brotherly love. So be devoted to one another, meaning the Christian community. Be, be devoted to your fellow Christians with brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Now, you remember earlier in Romans, Paul said, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. He's trying to teach humility. Honor others more highly than yourself. Be humble yourself. Treat others with honor. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Zeal is strong commitment. That's what zeal is, a strong commitment. So, you know, it says, don't be lacking in your strong commitment to the faith, to Jesus, uh, but keep your spiritual fervor, you know, your spiritual uh, excitedness, I guess we could say, serving the Lord. So, you know how it was right after you got baptized, I bet you, like me, really felt like you would do anything for Jesus kind of thing, right? Uh, but it's easy. I've been a Christian now a long time, and it's easy to kind of fall into the routine. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad you saved me. And then Go about the rest of the day as if it didn't matter to you at all, right? You just go ahead and live a normal life. Well, Paul says, don't let that fire in the belly you had for Jesus die off, die out. Keep it, keep it alive and serve the Lord with fervor, with zeal. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So we're supposed to hope with joy. Be patient when we're afflicted, when things go badly. Be patient. That's a good lesson for us right now, right? While we're all thinking, how long is this shutdown of everything going to go on? Uh, I, for one, would be, love to see you guys in person in our classroom again. I have my doubts that's going to happen this school year, maybe next fall before that can happen. But, you know, this affliction, Paul says you got to be patient. Got to be patient under affliction. So you have to have joyful hope, patience and affliction, and be faithful in prayer. So instead of just as so often people do, only pray when they feel like they need something. You know, I, I don't, don't pray for days and days, and then you think, oh, boy, I really need help with this. I'll pray now. Now, faithful in prayer means make it a normal part of your life. You pray on a routine basis. Uh, my tradition, morning and evening prayer, is much encouraged. Praying every morning and every evening to honor God and not just to ask for things, but to, to praise Him and to show our gratitude for what He has given us. Be faithful in prayer. 
Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. So when you see a, a fellow Christian here, he's talking about God's people against fellow Christians who are in need. We're supposed to share with them. You know, God has given us, hopefully, an abundance of things. In most of our cases, at least enough that a little bit's left over for sharing with others. Paul's encouraging this care for the community. Practice hospitality. This is very important, actually. In the ancient world, they had what were called inns. So if you're traveling on a journey, you could stay in an inn. But these were not, you know, these were not the Hilton. <laughs> this wasn't even Motel 6. These places were pretty nasty pieces of work in most cases. There were a few classier establishments, but all kinds of crime and vice went on in them. Uh, it, decent folks didn't want to stay in inns if they could possibly avoid it. Instead, you stayed with respectable people in the community you're passing through. If you're a Christian, you stay with Christians. It was expected that Christians put up traveling fellow Christians as their guests. Give them a bed, give them a meal or two, and then send them on their way to the next Christian community so they can find hospitality. So this is very practical, what Paul's talking about here. Goes on from verse 14. <clears> to <throat> oh, 14. <clears throat> and this comes straight out of the Sermon on the Mount, right? Pray for those who despitefully use you, Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount. The you know, right at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, he says, don't return people who do wrong to you with, with, with violence or with evil. Return to it with, with kindness and prayer. That's hard. But sometimes Jesus tells us to do things that aren't always easy, right? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. A hard saying, but one that is from the Lord's own mouth and here repeated by his apostle. When people mistreat you, don't hate them. Bless them. Pray for them. Don't curse them. We're challenged by the gospel to become new kinds of people, people who love and care for others, not return evil for evil. 16, live in harmony with one another. Get along, right? Uh, harmonia is to have the same mind is what it literally means. So try to agree and get along and be agreeable. You know, don't stand on your own ideas and insist and all that. But try to get along with folks. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Now, the society they lived in was much worse than our American society today. We mix pretty well uh, in America. You know, there might be a few people that are ultra rich who wouldn't want to associate with the average people like you and me. But mostly, you don't get a lot of segregation on the basis of social class in America. At least not compared to many other countries and certainly not compared to the ancient Roman world Paul's writing in. There, your status mattered immensely about who you'd socialize with. But Paul says, as Jesus does, there's no place for that in Christianity. Treat everybody as brother or sister, regardless of their social standing. Don't be proud. Don't think you're all that. <laughs> but hang out with others. Treat them with kindness and care. Um, I think I might have skipped one little bit. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Sorry about that. That's verse 15. I don't know how I skipped that. But it is, it is important. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Now, you and I just celebrated Easter. And that is Jesus' triumph over death. And if you are in Christ, you will not die. Remember what he says just before he raises Lazarus. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever, whoever believes in me shall never die. Right? So death doesn't have power over the Christian. But that doesn't mean that when, and I've heard people do this, they see somebody mourning a loved one they've lost and they try to say, oh, don't cry. He's in heaven with Jesus. That's not what the scripture tells us to do. The scripture says mourn with those who mourn. Feel with those who are torn up, who are broken inside because they've lost someone. Don't go around trying to tell them, oh, you shouldn't be crying. 
like it's somehow a lack of faith on their part. That is not what the, Jesus says. It is not what the Apostle Paul says. Mourn with those who mourn because they've lost something. Even if they believe with absolute conviction they're loved only through Jesus, they're not there with them right now. They've lost them for a while at least, right? So it is not appropriate for us to go around saying, oh, don't mourn. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. They've lost somebody. They've lost something important to them. And we should be there for them. Not trying to short circuit their mourning. It'll pass with time, in my experience, and I think your parents would agree with this. With time, mourning does ease. But we're not to short circuit that. All right. So uh, getting back to verse uh, 15. Uh, don't 16, don't be proud, but be willing to associate with people in low position. Do not be conceited. <laughs> Again, don't think more highly of yourself than you are. 17, do not repay anyone evil for evil. That's the basic idea of the Sermon on the Mount, right? Turn the other cheek and all that, that Jesus said, all saying here, do not return evil for evil. Now, this doesn't mean, brothers and sisters, you ignore evil. You have to do what you can to reduce the quotient of evil in the world and in your society, your place where you are. But don't do evil in return for evil. Don't say, oh, they deserve it. I'm going to get them. You have to do what's just, what is fair, not returning evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. I think what he means there is to do just and good things. When he says right in the eyes of everybody, he doesn't just mean in, you know, hardcore believing Christians, but what decent society says is a good, true, and noble thing. And that usually comports extremely well, by the way, with Christianity, so don't worry too much. But don't go around doing evil for evil. Instead, do justice, do rightness, do the righteous thing to do. And it's not always easy. It's not easy, man. Sometimes. Sometimes you just want to pop somebody when they get after you, but that cannot be if you want to be a faithful follower of Jesus, right? Turn the other cheek, not pop them in the nose because they hacked you off. All right. <clears throat> if it is possible, this is verse 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Now, let's say if it's possible, as far as it depends on you. So when you have a breach with somebody, Paul would say, heal that breach. Restore that relationship if it is possible and so far as it depends on you. Now, we all know sometimes relationships go rocky and bad and you will want to heal that relationship. The other party just won't go along. They don't want anything more to do with you. They are so mad. They don't want to talk. I'm sure you, you've been around the block long enough to know that does sometimes happen. And therefore, Paul says, you know, insofar as it depends upon you, live at peace with everybody. Now, it could be the other party is just not going to go along with being peaceable. But you're supposed to give it your own best shot to try to restore peace to harmony. Uh, instead of har harboring resentments, we're supposed to let those go. Pray for those even who've abused us in some way. By the way, that doesn't mean you have to put up with the abuse, right? If somebody's treating you badly, it's okay to go. Get out. In fact, I'd say do that. Do that. But, you know, you're not supposed to return them evil for evil. Justice is one thing, evil another, right? All right. Uh, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, mine, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Now this, of course, is the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' teaching. The turn the other cheek thing is not to, not, it's actually a commandment to not take revenge. When you read it carefully, the point of what Jesus is saying, and what Paul expressly says, is don't seek revenge. That would be getting evil, responding to evil with evil. You respond with love. But again, I personally don't think Paul would ever tell you, put up with people abusing you. People, put up with people hitting you in the face. Of course he wouldn't say that. Uh, I don't think Jesus meant that when he said turn the other cheek. He was using hyperbole to say don't take revenge. Don't go after them. 
All right. Okay. On the contrary, 20. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Now, the line before is a quote from, um, let's see, that is a quote from uh, Deuteronomy 32, 35. So the Old Testament has God say, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Don't you, human, take vengeance. I'm the one who deals out things like that. I'm the one who does justice. And then the longer quote that you find there in verse 20 is from Proverbs 25 at verse 21 and 22. Uh, so there, he says, doing so, you'll heap burning coals on his head. I think it means conscience. If somebody is treating you unjustly and you respond with kindness, they're going to eventually say, man, I shouldn't be such a jerk. <laughs> you know, I should, I should behave better. This is just wrong. That, I think, is what he's getting at. Their conscience will get to them. If you respond with kindness, or at least nonviolence, Maybe the, maybe the person who's being a jerk will say, yeah, that wasn't really right of me. And they will begin to reform themselves, not behave like the lost. Uh, 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's the tagline that wraps it all up, right? Evil can be overcome by good. It doesn't work the other way. All right. So that's the end of chapter 12. We have a very interesting chapter 13 coming up in tomorrow's lecture. God bless.